I'm Ron DeLegge. Welcome to ETF Guide TV. It's great to see you again. I've got some amazing charts that I want to share with you on today's program. Before I do that, be sure to hit the like button if you've been enjoying the content on this channel. And join our community of like-minded investors by hitting the subscribe button. So let's get right to it. Let's look at the mood of the market and get a pulse on how the stock market feels at this particular moment. And according to the CNN Fear and Greed Index, you notice the market is extremely greedy. And it's been that way for the past month, for the past week, actually for most of the year. And greed, of course, leads to greater risk taking. It also leads to over leverage and overconfidence and the illusion of skill. See, the remedy is not to sell all of your stocks, all of your investments, and go to cash, as the market timers would want you to, to believe. They want to trick you into believing that they know the best time to time the market, right? See, the remedy is to get your mind right by always investing with an adequate margin of safety, right? If you do that, you don't need to get in and get out and get in and get out and cash out and cash in. More on that in a second. Margin of safety. Stick with me. Um, let's look at this next chart, which explains some of the reasons why the market is so optimistic and exuberant and greedy. Well, you just had the Dow Industrials experience their second longest winning streak in history. Got to go all the way back to 1987. That's when we, we uh, uh, tied that mark. Now, this was a 13-day winning streak, and as good as it was, it still failed to beat the great Joe DiMaggio. His 56-game hitting streak, trust me, nobody, nobody, including the stock market, is ever going to beat Joe's record. In terms of the big three indexes and the ETFs tracking them, these are U.S. indexes. The Triple Qs track the NASDAQ 100, and they are doing quite well. They're actually winning in a big lead way outperforming SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, and DIA, which tracks the Dow 30, also known as Dow Industrials. Triple Qs up over 44% since the beginning of 2023. And why is that? Well, there's three reasons. Technology stocks, technology stocks, and technology stocks. In terms of margin of safety, good time to do this public service announcement and to help you understand for those of you wondering, well, is it time to sell? Now that the market's doing so good, in 2022, of course, it's stunk. But the real question is not if it's time to sell. The real question is how large should your portfolio's margin of safety be? See, that's the question that you should know the answer to. And that should be in dollar percentage, do dollar figures or percentage term. And actually, that's why I built the margin of safety tool at etfguide.com. It'll do three things for you. It'll calculate what your margin of safety should be. It'll also help you implement that margin of safety, and then it'll help you monitor it. By the way, that calculation is a target of what your margin of safety should be. It's a guide post, and it, it's a pretty good one too, by the way. And so my point is, if you have an adequate margin of safety that's suitable in size to you, you won't be like the masses forever wondering, well, when's the best time to sell? In terms of S&P 500 industry sectors, you got 10 up, one down. That's pretty dominant in terms of bullish performance. And then that one sector that's down, that's uh, utilities, it's with modest losses and not what we would call a bearish, a bearish performance at all. A bearish negative performance would be something of the order of a 20% loss or greater. In terms of Tesla beating investments. And I wanted to do this chart for you because my YouTube peers have this insatiable obsession with Tesla. And that's all they can, some of them can do is they talk about Tesla every single second of their lives. And many of them paint this false impression that Tesla is the best investment ever. There's nothing that can beat Tesla. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. And this is my public service announcement that Tesla has been a great stock but guess what? It has not been better than Tekel, T-E-C-L, which has beaten Tesla by 600% over the past 10 years with a 3,600% return versus Tesla's 3,000% return. And I rounded up. That means if you invested $10,000 in Tekel and sat for 10 years, it would be worth $383,000 versus 
$291,000 in Tesla. For you mathematicians watching, that's an almost $100,000 difference in favor of the ETF. And as a bonus, I decided to do another chart for you. Another Tesla beating ETF. This is a year-to-date performance chart. That means it's since the beginning of the year, January 1st, up through the market close of July 28th. And this one aims for the same performance as Tesla, but with 1.5% daily bullish leverage to the upside. That means if Tesla's stock is up 1% on any given day, TSLL aims to be up 1.5%. Now, of course, the opposite is true. If Tesla's stock falls by 1%, then TSLL will be down by design 1.5%. So it's going to do worse on the downside. But if you're a bull on Tesla, then look at TSLL, which will deliver, again, the same performance return as Tesla, but with upside amplification. And by the way, the context for these types of investments, in case you're wondering, that includes single stocks, that includes leverage, that includes uh, non-core asset classes like Bitcoin and Ethereum and volatility, and as well as gold. All of these are what we call non-core types of assets. And the place that they belong in Delegi's three-bucket approach to portfolio management, that's my framework, there's three buckets, right? You got your core portfolio, you got your non-core portfolio, and then you got your margin of safety. Can you guess where the non-core types of assets go? Well, of course, they go in your non-core portfolio. That's your tactical bucket. That's where you've got higher risk, higher volatility, but also higher upside potential. Again, that's your non-core portfolio. And to learn more about this, you can go to etfguide.com, hit the membership link. And actually, I've got it in the description section below and you become a member of ETF Guide, it's free, and you can get access to my online classes, which explain how this works and the ETFs that we would define as core, core ETFs or core, core portfolio funds versus those that are non-core. And again, you, you just become an ETF Guide member. You cannot get access to these classes if you're not a member. So you can't just buy the classes. You have to be a member at ETFGuide.com, and again, that's free. Uh, I've got the link below. John Davey, one of our uh, valued ETF battle judges, sent out this tweet this past week. Is it a tweet or is it an X? What do we call these now that Elon Musk has changed Twitter's name to X? He's got this fascination with X. Everything is X. His company, before it was PayPal, was, what was it, X Payments? He's got SpaceX. He's got Tesla X. He's got X. He's got a a fetish with the word or with the letter X. And so X, I guess, is the latest iteration of his social media platform. It used to be the artist formerly known as Twitter. It's now X. Anyway, Davey says that consumer credit card debt is about to hit a trillion dollars for the first time in American history. Wow. Now, here's the problem is that credit card interest rates are at all time highs. The silver lining, if you could say there is some, a strong labor market is keeping consumers afloat. But he asked the question, rhetorical question, can the economy sustain this sort of load of debt over the longer term? I don't know. Stick around and wait and see. Federal Reserve raised interest rates again this past week. We asked the question to our viewers on our community tab what do they think about U.S. interest rates? Is the Fed done or are they not done? And uh, over half of our viewers that, uh, that polled or participated in the poll feel that the Fed is done. They're not going to raise interest rates anymore. And uh, so th take that for what it means or what it's worth. We also asked a question. This describes my retirement plan. A whopping 43% of you do not have a written investment plan. Well, that's my next tool that I'm planning to launch at ETFguide.com. Stick around and stay tuned for that because this is a critical part of your overall planning that all investors should have, not just new investors, but experienced investors and everyone in between a written investment plan. I'm going to help you do that. Uh, again, uh, just go to ETFguide.com and you can... Uh, get in the waiting line if you want to get to that tool. I call it the IPS, Investment Policy Statement. 
I've got links below to the description section. This is a, a viewer um, a viewer comment about the the ETF Battle Show, which is one of our most popular programs on this channel. And this was from Jim Bennett. He suggested that we should carve up our our categories for the ETF battles and just get a little bit more granular. He wants to see value and cost, exposure and strategy. He wanted to see taxes and then risk versus safety as part of the the um, the overall categories. And um, some interesting ideas that you raise here, Jim. Um, the only the only thing that I would say with regard to taxes is that's really beyond the scope of ETF battles because uh, the investments themselves can be held. I mean, we don't know if that's held in a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA or some other type of investment. It might be held in a taxable account. So when you start to talk about taxes, it could get very hairy very quickly. And um, we just it's out of our scope. We can't get into that. It's too deep, deep in, in the in the weeds, so to speak because of the fact that uh, I don't want it to become a one-hour program. And some of these other ones, like risk and safety, you know, that's also a highly personalized kind of, kind, of, kind of thing. I think when you start to talk about risk, you know, I think about it in terms of your overall portfolio and how you're positioned. And like I said, th that three framework, um, you've got the core, the non-core, and then margin of safety. So I think about risk in that context and not necessarily the individual investments themselves. I think about where they go, those individual investments in those three buckets. So anyway, I appreciate your, your thoughts and uh, your ideas. Who knows? We may implement some of this in the future. I don't know, but it's good feedback. In terms of your summer reading list, check out my book, Habits of the Investing Greats. It's available on Amazon.com. And these are some of the investing greats featured in that book. Some of these names you've heard, some of them you haven't heard. And I've also got a few names in there of folks that are so under the radar, what I call ordinary investors, the ones that get no recognition. These are not the famous investors. They're not the, the Ray Dalios. They're not the, the Benjamin Grahams or the John Bogles. These are the ones that are flying underneath the radar. Got a few of those in my book, Habits of the Investing Greats. And the idea is to help you to cultivate the right habits so that you can have the type of investment results that uh, you deserve. As far as remembering legends, uh, Tony Meisner, one of the leading voices of the, the, the U.S. rock band, The Eagles, has passed away. He, um, he was featured, I think, in that song, uh, Take It to the Limit. I think that was one of his his songs that he led. There may have been some others, but uh, he was a legend and rip legends, rip Tony and uh, rest in peace. As far as key takeaways, S and P 500 sectors, as we pointed out, are more bullish than bearish. You got ten up, just one down. Fear and greed index is at extremely greedy levels. It's been stuck that way for pretty much all year, and of course, uh, a good time to revisit your margin of safety. How big should your cushion be? Well, you know, generally speaking, as you get closer to retirement, your margin of safety should grow. Your cushion should be bigger when you're just starting out or still in the, what I call, accumulation phase of your investment plan. Then you can have a margin of safety. You should have one, but it, it can be smaller in size compared to those that are uh, just at the point of retirement or already in retirement. And then my final service announcement is you got five more months to keep shifting money into the tax-free zone to avert the imminent threat of skyrocketing U.S. income tax rates. The spending of the U.S. government is unsustainable. They will not be able to continue functioning without dramatically raising U.S. income tax rates. And now is a good time because we've got stable tax rates until 2026. So you can do things like Roth conversions, Roth IRA contributions, Roth 401k contributions. That's a tax-free. And then start to relocate some of the money in your taxable bucket and your, your tax-deferred bucket into the tax-free zone. Remember, tax-free is always better than tax-deferred and taxable. And that pretty much does it 
for today's episode. I want to thank all of you for watching ETF Guide TV. Be sure to hit the like button if you've been enjoying our content and the subscribe button. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll see you next time.